Well, hello, online family. I'm Matt, our church's media director, and I want to welcome you to our online service. Over the past two years, ministry at our church has taken on many forms. Many things are still uncertain about the transition out of COVID-19 from a pandemic to an endemic, but some changes will go back to how they were prior to 2020. But after many discussions, we in church leadership recognize that this online service, while it began as a response to COVID, has a permanent place in our church and in our community. We know that many of you have tuned in faithfully every single week to worship, to listen, to give, and to participate with our church family. However, we've realized two things. One, we don't know who is tuning in every week. And two, we want to do more to connect and shepherd our online congregation. We have a number of things that we are praying about and plans to increase our online church services presence in our church and enrich the community of those of you who tune in every week. So here's what we're asking. Whether you're a longtime member of our church or you just started watching, if you tune in regularly to our online service and call UCC your home church, would you please go to ucov.com online, click the button to fill out an online connection card, and make sure you select online under service attendant. We have a number of things planned specific to our online family and we don't want you to miss out. We cannot stress enough how important it is to stay connected. We cannot do this life or this faith journey alone. So pause this video, head to ucov.com slash online to fill out that online connection card and we will keep you up to date on all things related to our online community. Thank you. Now, here's what's going on this week at our church. A final reminder, our annual UCC celebration and barbecue is next Sunday, June 12th at 1230 p.m. We'll have food, games, an ice cream truck. It's gonna be a great afternoon to just fellowship with our church family. And just a couple of reminders, the suggested donation is $5 to help us cover some costs and we still need some volunteers. So you can go to ucov.com slash annual celebration to fill out our online volunteer form. Also, don't forget, there's only a couple of weeks left to help buy items for Breakaway, our summer day camp. You can visit the wall in the lobby for pull tags of needed items for our camp or email Bronwyn at bronwyn at ucov.com. Simply purchase and return the items by Sunday, June 19th. As a church family, one of the ways that we serve each other is by prayer. Whether you're a regular attender or a first time guest, we would love to pray for you. So if you would like us to partner with you in prayer or celebrate with you in a praise, simply go to ucov.com prayer, write out your prayer request or praise and know that our team will welcome the opportunity to pray for you this week. Thank you again for being here with us online. As we continue our service, will you please join me in prayer? God, we thank you again so much for the ability to meet together in, in our living rooms and cafes and wherever we are tuning in, uh, we get to be together in spirit. Thank you, Lord, that two years and two months into this, it, it feels like just a, just a minute ago that, that all this, everything changed. And, and Father, I ask that you actually stretch out this time during this season, that we would not deviate away from the lessons that you taught us, that we would take moments to pause allow you to heal our hearts, allow you to instruct us, and yes, even rebuke us into areas where we can be stronger because of what we endured over the last two years plus. Father, over this message, we invite you into our hearts. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to teach us, to instruct us, to grow us through what we experience in this online service. We love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
40 years in the wilderness, 40 years. It wasn't very fun, 40 years. 40 years of not having a home, 40 years of wandering, 40 years of wondering when your, where your next meal was gonna come from, 40 years of funerals, 40 years of weddings, 40 years of deaths, 40 years of births, 40 years of wanting a homeland, 40 years of remembering what stability kind of felt like, 40 years. And after 40 years, God began to fulfill his promise to the Israelites, and he brought them to the edge of what was called the promised land, the land that was promised to them, that they would be able to inherit, that they'd be able to call home, that, that they'd have houses and, and swimming pools and spas and the latest televisions. It was going to be a great thing. And right before they cross, Moses says, we've got to stop, everyone. We've just got to stop. And he spends a whole month, a whole month, reviewing what they learned over those 40 years. We've been spending three weeks in just the, a few chapters of the book of Deuteronomy looking at some of the things that Moses asked them to remember. 
When we come out of a season of hardship, out of struggle, out of pain, it's just so tempting to want to move quickly by and move on. The problem is that we don't really process our grief. We don't process our pain. What the Israelites experienced, I'm sure there was trauma. And so it was really important just to stop and ask, where was God in all of this? And God actually used the wilderness to teach the Israelites something, to prepare them for what was next. Moses knew that the Israelites were about to enter a promised land with other societies there, other peoples, other cultures that weren't God-fearing, that weren't God-followers. And he was rightly concerned that without a grounding, the culture that they entered would be more influential than what they just experienced in the wilderness. As we come out of COVID and, and enter this next era, whatever that looks like, everything in us is just going to want to say, let's just forget that. That was awful. That was painful. I'm done. I think that hurts us to do that. I think we're seeing a greater mental health crisis in this era than we were during COVID as people are just trying to move on without processing what just happened. And so Moses spends some time and what he tries to do, and it's kind of what sometimes spiritual directors do. He asks, where was God in all of this? What was God up to? We've talked about how trauma could really affect us negatively, things that we don't have control of, things that were done to us, things where we felt powerless and we were victims. And what, what God is trying to do is to, to heal that trauma and convert from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth. It's not that he's diminishing the pain, but he's actually going to want to use the pain for the formation of people's character and the formation of their community together. And that's my hope, too, that as we enter this next era and go to our summer and fall, that we would see this past season as something where God has been used to form us individually, but also to usher in a new era of our church that he will form us communally as well. We spent a lot of time talking about, hey, if you allow God to help you reflect on the past and see where he was loving you, you're going to grow in your love for him, even in the midst of the pain. If you see what God did and who you are compared to him, you're going to grow in your awe and reverence for God. And naturally, you're going to grow in your influence. You're going to want to include people. We talked about having just come sit with me moments of including people on your journey with God. Last week, we talked about one of the uh, dangers is to think that God's favor towards us is based on our own performance. And the good news is the gospel, that God's favor has nothing to do with your performance. It has everything to do with his character. So there's a humility that, that when we do see that we did well, we do see good things coming out of it. It wasn't because we did anything, but because God was gracious and keeps us humble. Today, I want to look at Deuteronomy and a few verses in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And I think there's some principles here as we close this series of how God uses hard times, how God might have used COVID-19 for us, how God might have used this season of quarantine and social distancing and, and Zoom. How might he use that in our own formation? The first thing I think that really comes up is Deuteronomy, I'll read verse uh, 2 in chapter 8. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you, will, you would keep his commands. One of the things that God does is he actually uses hard times to reveal our character, both good and bad. He actually uses hard times and stress to, to kind of uh, be a filtering mechanism to show, how are you doing right now? Where's your character at? I remember uh, when I was doing junior high youth group ministry in churches, we'd always kind of read these passages about Jesus. And Jesus would say, would love your neighbors yourself or be kind to others. And my junior hires would go, yeah, 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 of course, of course, of course. But I said, okay, here's where to apply this. Apply it with your siblings. And you just should see their faces. It was like, What? Because that, they realize, oh, now you're, now you're getting close to home here. Like, this idea of loving and being kind and serving sounds so good theoretically, and I can even ascribe to it in my, house, in my head, but now you're getting personal. You're talking in my day-to-day -day life, I'm supposed to be kind to the person that irritates me the most. I think sometimes we can get a, a picture of ourselves that gets tested. And if you ever realize that sometimes your real character shows up at home, uh, maybe with your spouse, with your kids, with your parents. Like, you can be on your best behavior in public, and people can think you're wonderful and kind and nice. But then you ask people who live with you, and they have the real story. Why? Because they, they see you when you're down. They see you when you're stressed. You let your guard down. And, and what God is saying is that he uses hard times to reveal some of those things, to test you and to know what was in your character, what, what surfaced during that time. 
And did you respond to God? Did you obey him and trust him in that season? And here's what I want to say. Let's just say some ugly things were revealed. Can I just say praise God? Because God isn't a I told you so type of God. He brings these things in order to heal and to reform and to shape and to bring you into f- the, your, your full identity into him. So rather than trying to hide the things that come up, just admit, go, yep, I really blew it there. Um, you know, when the Israelites began to feel hunger in the wilderness, the first thing they said was, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. It's a sense of, man, this is getting hard, and their character was revealed. This stinks. God is awful. I hate what I'm doing. I just want to go back into slavery. Um, but it's actually, it shows that in the trials and in the hardships, that's where character is really revealed. Uh, when uh, we used to go on um, international missions trips, you know, and we do this in our own church, we'll often go through orientation, some team building exercises. And part of what you're trying to do is simulate stressful situations to see what comes up and to help process it. We would do a team building game where all you were given was masking tape and drinking straws and you were divided into teams of four or five or six. And the idea was you had, I think, two minutes, maybe five minutes to build the tallest tower you could with straws and masking tape and you're competing with all the other teams. And it's interesting, you know, you start the timer and people are kind to each other. They're being polite. They have manners. But as you get down to one minute left, 45 seconds left, 30 seconds left, and the stress raises and rises, you begin to see people's real behaviors. Mr. Nice Guy is really mean all of a sudden. Miss Sweetheart is all of a sudden, uh, you know, complaining left and right. It's like, what happened to these people? You were the most sane, loving people, but you just had a little stress and competition, and the kind of worst comes out. But what was great about those exercises is that we would debrief and go, yeah, man, I didn't know that about me. And I'm really sorry I said that to you. I'm really sorry I over. I'm sorry I thought this of you. And it's a chance where in God's community, he, bring, he brings things up to heal and to restore. God does that. And I just wonder during COVID, if you were just to reflect and say, God, in my moments of stress during COVID, what was revealed about my character? And did I obey you? Did I, did I yield to your will? Or did I just kind of throw that out? You know, church, I love you, and I love so, and, and, you know, I won't reveal any personal information here, but some of you who are normally sweethearts and kind were not very nice in COVID, and there's grace, and we've worked it all out, but sometimes I would get emails from some of you who I know who are close, I'm like, what just happened? You're, you're like, someone took over your email account and emailed me. And I'm like, what? Did, or some of you will come talk to me and, and your tone's like, what just happened? We were just out for dinner laughing and all of a sudden, like, it was like stress brought out the worst. Again, rather than just trying to cover that up, what if we just stopped and said, God, what did this reveal? And I think, I hope it's a, a thing that helps humble us a little bit, but also draws us towards God not away from him. Like, God, I need your help. I'm still a work in uh, progress. So here's the question. God uses hard times to reveal character. How did you respond during stress during COVID? What was in your heart? What showed up? And did you keep God's commands? And if so, if the answers are yes, say thank you, God. And if not, use the time to to realize that God is just helping surface what is in your character. There's things he wants to heal. And that's where he takes a post-traumatic stress syndrome and makes it more into post-traumatic growth. It's this idea that he wants to use this last season as a growth opportunity. Because guess what? There will be stressors to come. There being, you know, I don't know what's going on with COVID, but other life situations are going to come up. And you're going to disagree with other people. You're going to disagree with leaders. You're going to disagree with church leaders. And this is a time to say, God, what is my character in this moment? And will I listen to you and use you as my guide for how I behave in this moment? So God uses hard times to reveal character. He says that to the Israelites. I use these years to humble and test you know what was in your character, in your heart, to know whether or not you would keep my commands. He goes on and says, God, you know, the other thing we need to learn is God actually uses hard times to help us become aware of what our true need is of what our true need is. Now, if you ask me, hey, John, what do you need? I would say, well, I need food, I need sleep, I need housing. All those are true, but what God reveals is that there's an underlying need behind all those things. And often hard seasons hopefully bring to awareness what your true needs are. In verse three, it says, God humbled you. 
causing you to hunger, then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God, of the Lord, excuse me. Now, Moses is referring to a situation in Exodus chapter 16 where the, the Israelites are complaining there's no food. They left, they left Egypt and they felt like, I remember the barbecues back there. Yeah, we were in chains and slavery, but at least we had hot dogs. It was just like, why can't we go back to slavery? God's saying, hey, I don't know if you remember, but when you had nothing, I provide a weird food that you never heard of called manna. And it showed up every morning and you were able to eat it. And what I want you to know is, I want you to know that I was the source of that. See, here's the problem. The Israelites were saying, can't we go back to Egypt? They fed us well. And God is trying to say, that wasn't the Egyptians who fed you. That was me. And, and God's trying to remind them that behind every good gift, there is God being the provider. And what he did for the Israelites is he stripped away everything, even their ability to have food. And he showed that he was the miraculous source. Uh, in a moment, we're going to celebrate communion. I'll have some bread in my hands. And I, you know, I don't know the whole process, but I imagine that somewhere on some farm, someone was growing wheat. And somewhere on some farm, wheat was collected. And somewhere that was collected and made into flour. And somewhere there was a shop that baked the bread. And somewhere there was a packaging company that put bags on it and distributed it. And somewhere there was a grocery store that got it and put price tags on it. And somewhere there was me or someone else who went to the store and got it. And I get to eat it. Now, I can go one of two directions. I can say, thank God for Safeway. Thank God for the farmers, which are all part of the process. Or I can say, but behind it all was God. He was actually the giver of this food. And one of the things that God used the wilderness for was to help people see everything you're longing for, food, shelter, companionship, belonging. I'm the gift giver. I'm the source. He says, I wanted to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. It's not the bread that you need. You need God who provides the bread. It's not the drink that you need. You need God who provides the drink. It's not the house that you need. You need God who provides the... The idea is God is trying to say, look, all this generosity you've experienced, it actually, I'm, I'm the behind-the-scenes guy who's provided all of it. If you guys remember in, uh, in the Gospel of Mark, actually a couple of the Gospels, a rich man comes to Jesus and says, What, what must I do to inherit uh, the kingdom of God? And uh, Jesus says, Well, what you tell me? And the guy repeats all these commands. And Jesus realizes there is one area that you still believe that you are the source of, and it's your wealth. So Jesus says, I want you to sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And the man goes away sad. And there's this sense of, this man understood all these other things about God's greatness, but there was one thing he felt like, but this doesn't come from God. This comes from me. And so Jesus had to challenge that. Afterwards, when Peter sees what happens, he tells Jesus, Jesus, we have left everything to follow you. And Jesus says, hey, those things you've left, you're going to be rewarded both in this life and the life to come a hundredfold. Why? Because God's the source. Jesus is the source. I think some of the people who've gone through the most trial and have come out better for it. And that doesn't always happen. Not always, not, people don't always come out better through suffering. But those who do have a profound sense of God's presence and His goodness and His providence in the midst of this, midst of it all. One person that's an example is King David. He went through so many trials, so many trials, hunted, betrayed. I mean, the, the craziness of he went, what he went through to be king. And he wrote lots of psalms, and one of the psalms I really enjoy is Psalm 27, where he says, One thing I ask from the Lord. In other words, here's the one thing I ask. God, through all my trials, here's the one thing I ask. There's only one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep me safe in His dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of His sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. In the midst of all of David's trials, being hunted, his troubles, his hunger, his need to act crazy, he's like, you know, in the end, what I've learned, I only want one thing. I want God. I want God. He's the one who takes care of me. He's the one who provides. 
Now, unfortunately, for us to get to that moment, sometimes God has to strip away things that we've come accustomed to relying on. And this is what happened in COVID. I want to be honest. I was, when COVID first hit and, you know, we were kind of socially distancing, I was just outside a lot. And I, I was outside more than I was pre-COVID. And I remember taking my walks, taking my runs in the sun going, this is great. I love this. Go COVID. I, I, you know, I'm not, not to minimize, obviously, the horror of all the deaths. But there was a sense of I'm really enjoying it. But you know where I went south is when the fire struck and there was smoke outdoors and I couldn't go outside. I remember that moment. This is where character was. I was, reve- I, was uh, I was angry. My character was real. I was bitter. I was complaining. And there's a sense of, ah, all I need is clean air. But really, what my biggest need was the God who provides clean air. What I really need is God. And, and when God strips things away, he, he takes away the things you typically rely on so you can begin to focus on Him. Sometimes He'll cause you, if you're dating, to go through an awful breakup and you cling back to Him. Sometimes financially, God will strip away wealth or, 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 or go through a financial crisis. You, you grab on to Him. Sometimes you have the approval of friends or family and that approval is lost and you grab on to Him. Sometimes you've relied on a future that you hoped would happen, a college career or a spouse that's not happening. God says, grab on to me. God says, I humbled you, causing this hunger, which you did not even, uh, would, and then provide food which you had not even known about. Why? Because I wanted to teach you that I'm the source. All good things come from me. King David in Psalm 73, in the midst of crisis, starts the psalm just blaming he talks about his enemies, and the word they is just repeated over and over again. They are awful. They are bad. They're hunting me. They don't know me. They, 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 they. And then in the middle of the psalm, he switches to, it's the, the word isn't they, but it's I. And he goes into like self-pity mode. I try. They don't, I'm so, I. And he's like, you know, self-pity mode. But then the last third of the psalm, he looks at God and he says, you, you, you. And that's where he gets the peace. And he ends the psalm with, Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. Can you say that honestly right now? Earth has nothing you desire but God. You know, I desire Italian food. I desire hanging out with my kids. These are all good things. But what, what, what God's trying to say is, as you pull away these layers The source of all this is God. Can you step back and say, God, you're the giver of all good gifts. There is nothing I desire on this earth more than you. You're it. This is what David came to. He went from they, 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 to I, 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 to you. And one of the ways that God will use traumatic situations, wildernesses, COVID-19 seasons, is to get you away from the they, they, they blame, get you away from the I, 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 self-pity, and get focused on the you. God, you. I've heard some of you be in the self-pity mode, and not to minimize the harm, but you can't stay there and be healthy with God because your eyes are on you. Your eyes are on, your eyes are on the unfairness of what's around you, which are, it's all valid. But there's something that gets you through that, that is just understanding that God is God, and He is the provider of all good things. Here, here's the other thing that God often uses hard times for. And it has to do with what's coming up the next season. See, one of the biggest concerns is the um, Israelites went through this filtering process, this refining process, this purifying process, this remembrance of God is their provider. God is the rescuer. God is the good one. And now they're going into a season where they're getting some of the things that God provides, homes, gardens, uh, you know, cable. No one uses cable anymore, internet, whatever, streaming. Uh, and there's a sense of Moses wondering, when all this is around you, are you going to forget that God gave you all these things? Bear with me as I read eight verses, uh, Deuteronomy 8, uh, 10 through 18. When you have eaten and are satisfied, satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not, do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe His commands, His laws, and His decrees that I'm giving you today. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, your bank accounts and all you have is multiplied, 
It says, if you forget God, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He, God, led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He, God, brought you water out of hard rock. He, God, gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, catch this, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. Moses says, man, as you enter this post-traumatic season, this post wilderness there's going to be a huge, huge danger. You are going to forget that it was God who brought you out of this. And when things start going well, when you can go travel without masks, when your bank accounts look healthier, where you're hanging out with family left and right, where you're getting great jobs, where you're remodeling your home or purchasing a home, there's going to be times where you want to look over all that and go, yep, look at me. I did so well. And and Moses is trying to remind his people and, and us, in those moments, we've got to beware of the lie that says, my power and my strength and my hands have produced this wealth for me. My prayer, church, is that COVID have remi- will remind us of how wonderful and dependable God is, that He is all I need. And when we have the, the gifts of our gift giver, when we have the generosity of our gift giver, that we keep remembering it was our gift giver who gave it to us. Remember what God has rescued you from. Remember what God has done for you. Remember his faithfulness so that when you have all the distractions around you that might tempt you to think, I don't need him, that you won't need to go through another wilderness. That God will remind you in that moment of his providence for you. And church, that's my hope for us. That's my hope for us that we'll be able to grieve these past couple years, feel the pain. We'll be able to see where God loved us. We'll be able to see where God's might was strong. We'll be able to tell stories about that. We'll be able to understand that God's dedication to us is irregardless of our righteousness, but totally committed to his character. And that we would use this season just to reflect and say, God, what did I learn about myself? What did you show me about myself? Do I trust you in times of crisis? What comes out of my soul and my character in times of trust? God, where do you need to refine me? And God, will you you help me see that you're really the true provider of all good things? So that when I'm surrounded by all these niceties and these things that make me feel good, these new technology things or these new home improvements or new gear or new games or new travel, oh God, protect me from thinking it was me because I learned in the wilderness that it was you. And I want that to be true from now on out. Help me be faithful to you. Church, we now have the privilege of celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. All who humbly put their trust in Christ and all who are truly sorry for their sins and wish to be delivered from them are invited to draw near with faith to receive this holy sacrament. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Bless, O God, this bread which we eat together and the cup which we drink together. Amen. Church, let us eat and drink together.
Show me who you are as I draw near. If you're not in it, then I don't want it. Let all else fade away. Take the whole world, but give me Jesus.
Thank you again for worshiping with us today. Just a reminder, make sure you take some time to go to ucov.com slash online and fill out the online connection card, and we will keep you up to date on all things related to our online community. We also want to say thank you to everyone who gives regularly to UCC. Your financial giving supports everything that we do here at UCC, including the production of this online service. If UCC is your home church and you would like to partner with us in giving, or if you're a guest and you would like to make a first-time donation, we welcome you to join us in supporting our ministry work, both at home and abroad. So if God leads you to give to UCC today, simply text GIVE to the number on your screen. And if you haven't done so, you can also automate your giving on our website at ucov.com give. Another way that you can partner with us in ministry is by sharing this video. A simple message on social media, an email, a text, however you're contacting your people, could be the beginning of a family member, a friend, a neighbor coming to salvation. So we encourage you to copy the link to this video, paste it in a message to someone that God may be laying on your heart this week. And if you need help sharing this video, just text SHARE to the number on your screen and we'll help you with that. Thanks again so much for being here with us online today. We hope you join us again next week as we have a guest speaker, Brian Murphy, a superintendent-elect of our denomination. We will be recording his sermon at one of our live services, so just as a heads up, you can expect our online service to become available on Sunday afternoon or evening next weekend. Now, receive this benediction. Brothers and sisters, may you allow the Lord into your hurts and where you have hurt others through this prolonged season of COVID. May you receive his mercy and his rebuke as we look onward to whatever comes next. And may we not commit the sin of forgetting all that God has done, is doing, and will do for us. Go in peace.